The first lesson I learned as a young lieutenant in the Marine Corps, lead by example. The second lesson is that officers never settle for the minimum if you want your men to respect you. When it comes to the PFT, the personal fitness test, don't even think about getting the bare minimum. You want to have at least a first class and preferably a perfect score. When it comes to your uniform, before you inspect others, you better make sure your gear is perfect. The reason for all this is without even saying a word, these high standards telegraph who is in charge. So how to unconsciously send signals you're a leader in the workplace? How to telegraph high status so you grab the attention of the woman you want? Well, gents, that's the subject of today's video. Today's video, gents, is brought to you by Anson Belt and Buckle. This is a company I've been talking about for coming in on a decade. Seriously, these guys first grabbed my attention back in 2011 because I thought they were making really innovative belts. They've got this really cool micro adjust system that allows you to adjust the fit of the belt down to a quarter of an inch. Compare that to a regular belt buckle that has the holes spaced one inch apart. The end result is a belt whose fit is much more comfortable. In addition, on an Anson belt, you don't get those ugly bend marks that start to appear just after a few wears. This belt right here I've had for about four years, worn 50 times, no issues. Trick question here, how many different combinations do you see? The answer, it's not three, it's nine. How? Three times three. Three interchangeable buckles, three interchangeable straps give you nine different belt combinations. To get started, gents, go over to their website and in my opinion, grab the box set. I think it's the best offer they've got. You can choose three buckles and three straps, two straps, three buckles. Whether you want the dress belt look, you want to go for a casual, you want to go for a combination, the choice is yours. And on top of all this, they've got amazing customer service. And I know this because you guys have told me the stories about how you've cut your strap a little bit too short. Guess what? This one guy, he reached out to Dave and said, I'm so sorry, I just need to buy another strap. Dave said, don't worry about it. And he went ahead and sent him a new one free. And this is the kind of company why I support them for so long because they've got amazing customer service and they treat customers just like they treat family. So go check them out, guys. Use that link down in the description to get the best deal on the web. So the first step to looking better than all the other guys around you is to know the dress code and step it up by about 25%. Oh, there is no dress code. You just go into the local bar. No, there is a dress code. Otherwise, people could walk in naked. Point being is there is always a way to understand how are people going to look and how to step it up a bit because your competition is not all those guys online. You don't need to be some style maven. You just need to beat the nine or 10 other guys that are there in that bar that are your competition. The nine or 10 other guys there at work that, yeah, you guys all look like peers and your boss's boss is down there looking, looking to give a next assignment to and you want to be that go-to guy that jumps on it, that looks the part, that looks competent. So you want to step it up a bit. Maybe everyone's walking around in ties and dress shirts. Well, maybe throw on a sports jacket. Maybe ditch the tie. Maybe go ahead. Oh, wow. People are actually really dressed down. They're wearing shorts, t-shirts. Okay. I'm not saying maybe just wear that button down with a nice pair of dark denim. Bring in some boots. There are so many easy ways to step it up. And I'm not saying being overdressed or being outlandish in the clothing you're wearing. You still want to come off as part of the local culture. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with stepping up that next notch, that 25% so that you look like the best dressed man in the room. Now, this next tip is a usual suspect here at Real Men Real Style, and that is know the name of your tailor. Make sure your clothing fits you. So many guys, they buy clothing off the rack and they don't bother to get it adjusted. And I think that one of the best investments you can make is take your clothing to a tailor and just get it brought in a bit, especially those off the rack shirts, those off the rack trousers, they just look like they've got all this excess material around the leg line in the buttocks area. You spend a lot of time in the gym. You've taken care of your body. So wear clothing that complements your build and makes you look better. Next up, wear footwear that makes you feel famous. Shoes that are going to get you compliments. Shoes that when you wear them, you're just going to stand out from the crowd. Now, I'm not saying you got to go crazy here. I'm just simply saying that you need to step it up. Yeah, you're wearing those beat up, you know, running shoes. Ditch those and go with a pair of sneakers like this. Or hey, you're already wearing dress shoes. Why not? Yeah bring in a pair of dress boots. Look at these right here with the broguing on them. These small details right here, it's going to separate you from all the other guys out there. If she's looking, hey, wow, look at those shoes. Women pay attention. Other men pay attention. These boots, they're going to make you look taller. These are the type of things you want to go for in your footwear. It's going to do nothing but help you feel better and look better. Next up, look for trousers that have 
texture. Jeans are cool and they have a little bit of texture with them, but I really like it when you look at gray flannels. You look at any type of flannels out there. You look at flannels that are going to come off the rack, maybe made in the jean style, but they're made from this really nice cotton material that has a three-dimensional weave. When you see texture on something, it's just something people want to touch. It feels cozy. It is something that, yeah, just it complements a lot of the other items that you'll be wearing and it stands out. And let's not forget about corduroy trousers. Perfect for the fall winter and spring. Cooler weather is perfect for corduroy. That textured look is just going to be warmer, more comfortable, and that textured look is going to work with a wide variety of sports jackets, shirts. You want to make sure though you find a corduroy that has about 11 whales an inch. I think that's going to be the most versatile type out there. Other options are going to be moleskin and cavalry tweed. A little bit harder to find, but if you look for them, you can find them out there. And don't forget about linen during the summer. It has a little bit of a rougher weave, and a lot of guys want to stay away from it because they're worried about wrinkles. I find in trousers because it's a heavier weave, it does a better job of retaining its shape and you're usually not going to have that bad of wrinkles. The next step, the step above the competition, leverage the power of patterns. So you notice this pattern in the jacket, it's a bit bold and I wouldn't recommend this for a first sports jacket for a guy. But if you're looking at your third or fourth sports jacket, don't be afraid of bringing in a window pane. It's a classic pattern, especially in a muted color like this. I think it does wonders for standing out from the crowd. An easier way though is to bring patterns into your shirts. I like going for small repeating patterns. From distance, this shirt looks like a solid, but you get up close and all of a sudden you see that pattern right there in the shirt and it really sets it apart and it gives a bit of depth. It's just a really nice look and such an easy way to bring this, you know, into your wardrobe. But if you want to keep it even safer, then just bring in patterns for accessories. My pocket squares, this one here is a solid, but usually I'm going for a paisley, one of the easiest patterns to bring in or bring in a casual tie, perhaps with a dot pattern. And remember the big no-no in matching patterns, two patterns right next to each other of similar color and similar size, that's something you want to avoid. The next tip is to leverage the power of the collar. So first up, any collar that you've got next to your face is in general going to look better, whether it's a polo shirt, whether it's a dress shirt, whether it's a casual button-up shirt. That collar is always going to look better than a non-collared shirt. It's going to feel a bit more formal. It's going to help to frame and balance out the face. Now, if you're going to be wearing a necktie, you want to go for a collar that's going to not, you know, you don't want to go for a spread collar if you've got a round face. If you've got a little bit of a heavier face, then you want to go for a pointed collar, one that's going to better balance it out. If you've got a narrow face, you want to avoid the pointed collar and instead go for that spread collar. The next step is to step up your accessory game. Specifically, let's talk watches. So my advice on watches is to start off with something that's relatively affordable. You want to first see, do you actually enjoy wearing a watch? It isn't for everybody. I know when I started wearing a watch, I actually loved it. It was a fashion watch, but you could start off with an Orient. You could start off with the Seiko. All of a sudden, you start wearing this watch for six months, seven months. You know that you love it. You can start looking for a more expensive brand. Now, the reality is that most people will not notice an expensive watch. They don't even know all the different brands. But the 1% that does, they're going to take note and they're going to realize, hey, we've got something in common and that's where the magic happens. You start that conversation with a business owner and that leads to you striking a deal. The next step to standing out from your competition, learn to dress for your body type. When you learn to dress for your body type, it's more about avoiding the pitfalls that come with every body type because if you're thin, if you're heavy set, if you're short, if you're tall, there are certain patterns, there are certain types of clothing that you want to avoid because they're just going to exaggerate something that you just don't want to exaggerate. So it's about not making those stupid mistakes when it comes to clothing. Now, if you want to know where to start because it's a little bit longer and a big topic, I'm going to link over to a video that's going to teach you how to dress for your body type in a lot more detail. The next step to standing out from your competition, learning how to mix and match clothing that has different formality levels like dress shoes and jeans. How would you put those together? Check out this video right here. I explain how to easily match dress shoes with jeans and the things that you want to avoid. There are a number of mistakes here and you don't want to make this style mistake because otherwise you'll look really bad, but there is a great way to be able to pull this off because I know so many of you guys want to be able to master this look. So check out this video right here.